Hello everyone, welcome to Onion Skin, and I'm gonna try and wrap up the interface tour in this video to try and help give you a nice well-rounded knowledge on what is and isn't available across the three different versions of Harmony 12. So you can see I've got the three of them open at the moment here with the toolbars heading down the left, Essentials is on the left, Advanced in the middle, and Premium on the right. In Essentials, the main ones are the Selection, Subselection, Brush, Pencil, Text, Eraser, Paint Bucket, Drawing Vector Shapes, Eyedropper, a Panning Hand, the Animation Mode Switch, a Free Transform Tool, and the Onion Skin. In Advanced, only a couple of major tools are added, which is the Pivot Tool and the morphing or shape tween and finally in premium is the inverse kinematics rigging tool now of course everything simply doesn't just come down to the tools so i'm going to help give you an understanding on what the fundamental differences are between the three versions who they're targeted towards and probably help make your decision now first of all i've stated a few times before that essentials is a nice everything you need, nothing more, nothing less. It's very easy to get into, everything is clean, there is no clutter, every tool, every button has a purpose and a useful one. There aren't too many tools in Essentials that go unused because it's very cleanly thought out. I recommend probably most people start with this one unless you know for sure that you want something bigger. Spend a month or so getting used to it and how far you can push the software because it's very easy to move up or down between the versions as you please. Now Harmony Advanced on the other hand is primarily focused towards the traditional animators, those who spend a lot of time drawing and will be drawing a lot most likely making heavy use of frame by frame techniques or really want to give an extra edge to the visual element of what they can do with their drawing. Harmony Advanced is all about making your drawings and your artwork better. Harmony Premium finally is all about compositing, bringing together all of the special effects, the extra polish to give it an extra professional look. However, there aren't really too many drawing tools added at that point. It's focused more predominantly on post-production and a few extra animation styles are added there as well. Now, as I pointed out before, there's only a couple of major tools that are added, but each of these tools, as you can see under tool properties, has a variety of switches and custom controls. And when comparing to essentials, you can see the differences on how many more switches and buttons tend to appear. Most of these controls boil down to two things in the differences between Essentials and Advanced, and that is line thickness variation and the art sublayers. So what are those? The brush tool in Harmony Essentials is fairly easy to understand. What you get is something that allows you to mess with the size and the weight of a vector brush that will change its thickness depending on how hard you press if you're using a tablet, and you can save presets of that line as well. Harmony Advanced takes things a bit further, but these lines are still indeed vectors. But what's especially cool is that when you add a new drawing layer, you can switch the mode over to bitmap, and your brush tool is given a completely new set of controls that will look and feel a lot more similar to what you would get in a program like Photoshop. Opening up the controls deeper, you now not only have control over the thickness, but even the hardness, the opacity, you can add textures, you can add two textures at once. So the uses of being able to animate with bitmap and even being able to combine vectors and bitmaps within the same layers together opens up a whole realm of new possibilities. But that's still simply dealing with the brush. Where things get especially crazy is with the pencil and what strokes can do. Now strokes, if you're not already aware, work like this. Two lines that although look similar, one has the vertices go around the perimeter of the shape and the other has the vertices go straight down the middle. The main difference is a pencil can be resized after the fact, whereas a fill is stuck that way, but can have its shape manipulated like this. So you see the difference. Now have a look at the tool properties here in Harmony Essentials. All I can do is change the weight, the smoothing, and save some presets based on those two parameters. This is what tool properties looks like for the pencil in Harmony Advanced. The difference is extraordinary. This looks like we were looking at the brush panel set because opening up its controls, not only can we now also change its 
minimum size and paint with a thickness variation just like the brush. See how the stroke is maintained through the center? But we can even add and draw with textures on a pencil stroke as well. And another fun thing you can do is have stencil strokes. This is a saved preset of a weight from start to finish of any given line. So here's one here that will start thick, get thin, and then end thick again. So I've just drawn a line that's all over the show, but when I let go, it has corrected itself to be thick on either end while thin in the middle. And you can make presets on any kind of stroke that you like. The other thing I mentioned that starts to change what all of the switches that are involved in all of the tool properties is the art sublayers. What are these? I'll spend some time in the future going a lot more into depth into how to use these things in practice to creating an animation. But when you create a new drawing layer, notice that this dialog box appears and you can choose between vector and bitmap. Uh, but there's also two, one called line art, one called color art. So I'm gonna add one of these, both as vector, right click along here in the camera view and go to art layer. And now the art layer has appeared. I'm gonna stash it here on the right hand side so they get laid on top of one another. And every layer you create is made up of these two pieces. By default, you're drawing on the line art, uh, but there's also another underneath called color art. And when I try and select things, notice that it only does one at a time. The general idea behind these is that your strokes and, your, and the line art of your character will exist on one, and the fills and the colors and all that kind of junk will exist on the other. Now it depends very heavily on the style and the approach and the general workflow that you're going to be using because uh, these things can get quite confusing and a lot of the time are even more trouble than they're worth. So if you're comfortable with your workflow and essentials, I say stick to it. But if you're doing some complicated character rigs, and there's a lot of tricky things that you need to remember and get used to. But when you do, and know where all these hidden buttons under each of the uh, tool properties are hidden and how to take advantage of them, you can save yourself a bit of time and get a much more crisp look as well because you can get the two sublayers to interact with each other in quite clever and unique ways, especially when you take advantage of mixing vector and bitmap layering. It can be expanded even further to four, which are called the overlay and underlay layer. And people take advantage of those in ways such as using one of them for their roughs, using one of them to just kind of put notes and, and thoughts on, which can be disabled and won't come out in a final render, even though they are viewable in the working mode. The last thing I wanted to point out with Harmony Advanced is the morphing tool. If you've ever used programs like Flash, you'll be quite familiar with this one. And what it does is takes two shapes from different ends of an animation and we'll join them together by right clicking going morphing create morph and you see how the timeline has created these arrows moving across the exposure and it will morph seamlessly in from one shape to another this is another thing that can take quite a while to get used to and i'll spend some time focusing on it in the future but when you figure out how to take advantage of this thing it's quite impressive how far it can be pushed or certainly well beyond what flash was capable of so I believe that's everything I haven't covered yet about the differences between Essentials and Advanced. Let me know if I've missed something. But lastly, here is Premium. I've stated before that its main focus is in the compositing, post-production, and special effects, but it also has quite a large focus for cutout animation and rigged-based stuff. Rigging is very possible in both Essentials and Advanced through the deformation chains and the and through just regular cutout or what I like to call daisy chaining. Premium takes it to a whole nother level and introduces at least, I think two or three other ways that you could rig a character. So there's tons of ways. I, I, I count probably a good five different ways that you could rig up a character. So it would probably be easy to explain it by just kind of drawing it here. So across Essentials and Advanced, they both have the same level of rigging capability. You can link pieces of a character together like this, so say this is an arm and it's pinned at the different joints like this and then you can swing that part, swing that part. Those are meant to be arrows, by the way. Swing that part, swing that part. Or you can build a simple skeleton structure that looks kind of like this. Uh, this is what a deformation rig looks like that goes inside of the vector out of your character and it will seamlessly bend the vectors like that which worked pretty well as well. The inverse kinematics rig in Harmony definitely can be used with this method. I think it can be used with this method as well. I haven't really tested it much, but I will before I do a video on it. 
works in the opposite way. So rather than moving this, this, and this, it means you can move the handpiece and the elbow will naturally bend and this bit will stay rooted as you can kind of, you know, puppeteer it all around by simply moving the end of the hand. Getting more advanced still is the curve deformer. So before I mentioned in essentials and advanced, you get the bone deformer. And these things work on a system of stick, joint, stick, joint, stick, joint, and will bend the vector art around where the joints appear. In premium, you get another type. These are called curve deformers. And they aren't comprised of their stick joint mode, but are rather just a seamless, long, bendy bone that has bezier handles on it. So you can put a piece of vector art in here and it will just kind of mesh and warp seamlessly. I've done a video that demonstrates how it works in the past, so go have a look at that. There should be a card appearing now. But finally is a type that I haven't shown before, which is called envelope deformers. And that takes any old shape, like whatever the heck this is meant to be, and encases that shape inside of a skeletal masking riggy thingy like that. And then you can mesh it around in all sorts of bizarre and crazy ways. And this thing creates the most complicated and intense rigs you've ever seen. But the level of quality and movement and flexibility that you can get out of them is so intense, it rivals actually drawing it frame by frame. I'm yet to figure out which method is faster because I'm sure it takes a very long time to rig one of these things, but the final result is incredible. And I know I've just talked about all of these rigging structures by simply demonstrating it on paper when I probably should have actually built some of these rigs for you, but hey, this works as a pretty darn good segue into the next major series that I'll be covering, which is all about cutout animation. So if I can tangent for a bit, I learned quite a lot by doing that roughing and epic punch series, because that thing took a really long time to achieve not a whole lot of animation. You know, we were just making one shot. So I've learned a lot from putting that together because it was the first kind of big thing that I did for this channel. So the next set is going to be all the different ways of putting together a cutout character that I just talked about. We're going to focus on each one from start to finish and make a full animated cartoon based around each one. We're gonna put the characters together, we're gonna to put the story together, we're gonna, to, it, it should be a lot of fun and hopefully will not take as long as that one shot of a punching man. So let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in. It's something that I've been wanting to do all year and I've been saying that I'll be doing it all year and I'm glad that it's finally about to happen. It's been an interesting journey so far. So thank you for sticking with me all this time. This has been the Harmony 12 interface tour. If there's something I missed or something that you want to see more of, please let me know. Because a lot of these tools and these features I simply talked about. I mentioned that they're there and I said where they are and where they aren't across the three versions, but I'm yet to really dig into each one and give you the ins and outs of every single tool. I hope you learned something from it. It's mainly been about the differences between the three versions, what is and isn't available. Hopefully soon we'll start digging deep into the full potential of each of these tools because I haven't really shown you everything that the pencil can do and everything that the paint bucket can do yet, uh, but believe me, it's on its way. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. So have some fun and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for coming by. I hope you got something out of it. If you got stuck somewhere or something was a bit tricky, or if you have an idea for something else you'd like to see in a video, uh, please let me know. In the meantime, you can check out some of my other stuff in those links just there. Whoa. But thanks again, and I'll see you again soon.